Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I uh, want to welcome you uh, to this session. Uh, we're going to be talking about quality beyond kernel CI in upstream Linux uh, for TI SOCs. I um, want to take a moment and highlight um, you know, something that we feel is very important. You know, TI has a, uh, a very long history in um, the open source community and collaboration, uh, as you can see from you know, all the, the different organizations there that you know, we have relations with, with, including Kernel CI, um, which we are very happy to announce TI is now a platinum member of Kernel CI as of this week. We're very pleased about that. Um, and I know you guys have probably seen this in some of the other talks, but I think it's important to highlight upstream first. Very important um, in our view to have a upstream first mentality. Uh, and as it relates to this presentation, if you're gonna have an upstream first mentality, better have a way to test the upstream. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that here. Uh, quick intro of speakers, my name is Barry Shara. Uh, I've been with TI a long time going on 18 years now. Um, started my life at TI and Analog, been in ED, uh, AP for about two and a half, going on three years. Um, I am the uh, manager of the system integration and test infrastructure team. Uh, we're responsible for managing the uh, physical infrastructure, hardware, as well as software for doing uh, tests at TI uh, for Linux. Um, I am also pleased and privileged to be up here with Nishant Menon, uh, who also has almost two decades of experience at TI, and he is everything Linux. So Linux system architect, uh, kernel development, kernel maintainer. Uh, he has a very, very, very deep experience uh, in Linux. Uh, we have also um, worked with Minas Hanbard Zimian, I uh, couldn't be here today, but his contribution is uh, no less important. Uh, he is the lead developer for the system test team that does uh, a lot of the automation tools as well as the uh, uh, kernel CI implementation, the, the, the test, kernel CI testing that we do uh, in this presentation. Okay, um, disclaimers. This is technology presentation. This is not a product readiness or roadmap. Uh, commitment, uh, and the opinions here are uh, our own, not TI's. So get mad at us, don't get mad at TI. All right, uh, quick overview. Um, give a little bit of background, a little motivation of you know, why we're doing this as it relates to kernel CI, uh, and then talk about how we're doing upstream testing. Uh, and this breaks down into uh, a few buckets here. You know, how are we doing the kernel CI testing? Uh, how are we doing uh, CI/CD testing as it relates to upstream, and then uh, full system test of uh, our upstream builds. Uh, and then I want to um, transition a little bit into, um, you know, talking about how do we get to a common testing framework, you know, towards common testing. All right. So motivation: Why do we use kernel CI? Um, Kernel CI provides a common platform, uh, obviously, to help kernel maintainers gauge our Linux kernel. Uh, and they do that by publishing the test results um, you know, on the, uh, the website, on the, the, the you know, customer-facing portal. Um, we need to use that to get notifications if there is a regression. We want to know about it, obviously. Uh, and it helps us gain confidence about our builds since the images are built outside of TI. You know, it sort of helps us make sure there isn't some secret thing hidden in there that makes it work inside TI, whereas it's gonna break outside TI. Um, so quick aside on how we do tests. So as I said, we maintain a test farm, my team does. Um, we have two sites uh, that have test EVMs, one in Dallas, which you can see on the left, Please excuse the cabling, it's utilitarian. Uh, and then one in Bangalore on the right. Uh, we have about 300 boards roughly split between the two sites. Um, those are used for both uh, Linux testing as well as RTOS. Um, you know, the key point here is that it is um, truly a global test farm. 
So we can initiate tests from one site, run them on boards at either site in parallel, uh, bring all the, the test collateral back to the original site. So it really helps with our um, parallelism and scalability across you know, all these different test platforms. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the upstream testing. Um, start with kernel CI. Uh, so the upstream testing we're doing in kernel CI, uh, we do automated build of test collateral. Um, so we build our boot images locally, but everything else is built at kernel CI, and we use the API to you know, pull it down to our site. So you know, the, the build has the kernel files, the DTB files, uh, the file system, um, and then you know, we pull that down from the kernel CI cloud to TI and run those tests on our boards in our test farm you know, in Dallas and Bangalore. Uh, the results are automatically you know, collected, uh, and uploaded to the storage site on kernel CI for web-based review. So, picture's worth a thousand words. It kind of looks something like this. You have the API server, the storage server, uh, web dashboard, query the recent kernel build, run the tests on the TI farm, publish results up to the storage server, and then make that available you know, through the kernel CI web dashboard. Um, so what is the status of this right now. So we are running nightly boot tests. Um, we would like to get the LTB and kernel self tests. Those will be coming soon. I think Minas is back in the office next week, so hopefully very soon. Um, we are currently running um, 13 upstream SOCs, and that covers both our Satara uh, platforms and our Jacinto platforms. Um, and you can see the, the, you know, the web screenshots there. Probably looks very similar to what y'all are used to. Um, and you can see that uh, you know, green is good, but it's not always green. Okay, um, upstream CICD testing. Um, our upstream CICD testing does end-to-end -end automation of the latest upstream build, test, and release. So the builds are uh, automatically initiated. Uh, test plans are automatically executed, again, on the boards. Uh, the results are tabulated into a report, uh, and the build collateral and those test reports are then automatically pushed up to a customer-facing portal. So the way this looks, you've got a next to prod branch, do the build, assuming that passes, you promote to actually run the tests, push all that collateral out onto um, the public portal. If for some reason the build fails, then that branch essentially is dead, it doesn't go anywhere until it's fixed, and then the next cycle has the next set of results. So these execute, the CSED tests execute nightly. Uh, the tests that we run tend to be a more expanded set of tests beyond what we're doing with kernel CI. Uh, they tend to include device driver tests that are a little bit more complicated, but you know, still fairly simple, you know, localized to a board. Um, one of the challenges with this, since we do want to run it nightly, is we tend to have to make trade-offs you know, between the, the test coverage versus the amount of time it takes to execute. You know, so we want to run this thing in you know, you know, three, four hours tops um, across you know, all 13 SOCs, so you know, that time tends to add up. Um, so the test reports that we have um, are really useful for our developers. You can see that um, you got you know, green for passing, red for not passing, uh, and it gives you the ability to drill down into an individual test and drill all the way down to the log file to triage and figure out you know, what went wrong. So for the, the upstream snapshots, we take, um, as I said, all the build collateral and those test reports, push them up to our software DL website uh, for anyone who wants to look at them to go see. Uh, much of the content is similar in the sense that you have all the SOCs that are supporting upstream. You can drill down to an individual snapshot, down to the test results for that snapshot, you know, all the way down to the log file to you know, dig down and figure out what went wrong if a test does not pass. Okay, full upstream test. So um, we've recently started running 
uh, full system test on our upstream. So we automatically uh, generate those test plans based on requirements. So this is a requirements-based um, testing strategy. Um, as you can probably guess, that can tend to generate a lot of test cases. So hundreds per SOC across all the SOCs, we can easily run thousands of tests. Uh, and these tend to be even um, longer running, more complicated tests than the CICD uh, test plan. So we can have, you know, device driver tests that actually require the device to be plugged into the, to the SOC, which is a challenge. You can have, you know, test cases that, you know, could run for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Uh, I think we have a test in there that does a thousand boots that can run for several hours. Uh, so these test cases take, you know, upwards of two days to run in some cases. So it's a, a you know, a very, very long cycle. Uh, we've implemented um, automation to flash the SD cards, uh, and obviously there's automation to collect all the results, tabulate them together, generate reports for all the SOCs. So as I said, automatically generated test reports, you can see an example here. Uh, these are not published to the community today. Uh, that is one of the things we would like to do, if it makes sense. Um, one of the you know, key highlights here versus the CACD, which is sort of a functional testing, is these test reports do link back to requirements. So you can get an idea of, you know, how much of our requirements are satisfied with actual passing test cases. And again, from a, um, from a triage standpoint, you can drill down to the individual uh, test case results all the way down to the log file, figure out what went wrong if something isn't passing. Okay. Um, so to recap where we are, um, we are running the kernel CI tests, so those go out to the kernel CI, upload the results to the web dashboard. We also have these sort of private builds, these private tests um, for CICD and system tests. Some of those are supported uh, uploading into the portal. And I suspect, at least in the conversations with folks over the last few days, that y'all have something kind of similar, a lot of you. Kernel CI tests, maybe some tests running privately, uh, maybe some of those results are, are uploaded somewhere where they can be viewed. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot of similar things implemented in different ways. One of the nice things would be, can we get to a place where all of that kind of testing is common. So we're all doing it sort of the same way. And can kernel CI sort of be the umbrella to sort of bring that together as sort of a foundation? And I will pass it off to Nishanth to dig into those details a little deeper. Thank you, Barry. That's good. You can hear me. Okay, good. Why? I mean, why would we care about doing this collaboratively? We all talk about doing upstream testing. Why can't people make products from upstream? Simple, they don't trust upstream. It all comes down to this little keyword over here, trust. I don't trust the quality of software, that's the, I can't trust that you won't regress in the future, I can't trust the features that you have in the. The solution that we are proposing here involves the standard stuff to manage trust. You standardize stuff so that, hey, if I see it on one vendor, it's the same on other vendors too. You decentralize. If I'm able to do it, you can replicate my results too. If it's like Git, right? You look at the shark comment, nobody has injected a new problem into the system. Reporting. Can we trust the reporting that you're doing? There's no bias in the reporting? What if you are changing the performance number a little bit, skewing the result towards your product? But that, that's not really true. Transparency is the key. Today, we don't have that transparency. Kernel CI is moving to the, the transparency. What can we do next stage? So, I understand most of the folks who work on Linux, are focused on purely on Linux. But the guys who are actually creating products, they look at the product solution. And most of these systems are heterogeneous in nature. You have Linux, you have RTOSs like FreeRTOS, Zephyr, ThreadX, 
There's so many different OSs coming to that. They all have the same problem. How do I test an interface? How do I test a peripheral? And camera sensor, for example, it doesn't change. Whether it's with TI, NXP, ADI, whatever interface you're using. If you're, if you're using a serializer, deserializer like FPD link, it's the same thing. Why are we testing it differently? If you dig down, right, I like to use this little thingy on the side. We all use different languages. This is the standard communication delta. We all would have sung uh, Kumbaya if we were all talking English together. But it's a diverse world, I get it. But if the communication were to get standardized between this, it would be much easier for folks to reduce the cost down and move between different vendors easily. There is limited value in looking at testing as something of a differentiator. It is already commodity. Let's commoditize it. There are a few topics I've kind of put on here, but it's just examples of various problems that we have. Some folks like Lava. I'm a big lab grid fan. Sorry, Barry. Uh, he likes Lava. Uh, there are different frameworks that people have created. TI decided to fork LTP, Linux test project, and added device driver test framework on top of it, which TI manages year on year. We have to rebase. It's completely out of tree solution. We also, on the host side, created something called a VATF. There's actually two different frameworks that we have on the PC side, because many testing involving peripherals have to send something from the board, and has to be cross-verified from the PC side as well. When you look at industrial protocols, for example, yeah, maybe you have a big list of things to do. They are all standard problems. We all repeat the same solution, but in different ways. Decentralizing, and this is key. You saw the farm that TI has, right? It's huge. Like We have specialized infrastructure, backup power supplies, all kind of crap going on. But there is real estate limits how much we can grow. Today we have 300, maybe we can grow to 800,000 boards, but that limit is coming soon. If I look at these products over 10 years, we say in Linux, hey, we love Linux, we support any product that people use for years on the go. Really, do we? Do you do testing for the same product 10 years from now, the way that you're testing today? Most of us don't. It's a matter of economics, right? The only way to spread this cost out is to let the guy who's interested, whose stake is high, to give the importance that he wants, instead of doing this centrally. Kernel CI does that today. It's already decentralized. There's a framework, there's a standard for us to do it. We can leverage it to the next level. So many things, if you guys are in corporate world, you know that our business priorities change. But TI has a lot of history of doing that often. Uh, our OMAP processors are no longer actively supported. There's a lot of folks who have complaints about it. There are other products that we have slowly scaled back, but there are real products out there that actually use these processors. What do they do? They have no way to replicate what we have done internally. This gives them an option of doing that. Anyway, long story short, there is so much dupli duplication that is going on here. The other thing, which is very scary to my marketing people at least, and I'm, again, I'll claim the disclosure, I'm speaking as an individual right now, nobody likes to publish performance results out there without marketing team review. Why? Because a DMIPS number change is millions of dollars lost. But guess what? There's nothing hiding it. I can run Tristron as you can. You'll get different numbers. But if you could reproduce the same test results, that's great. We are scared about saying, hey, we failed a test case. It's normal. There are regression, like for today, for example. U-boot master branch is completely broken. None of the K3 devices boot today morning. Yesterday, it was. Today, it's broken. We know internally because we are monitoring this. We are monitoring both U-Boot Master and U-Boot Next, and we know Master has records, and we know why by now. There's nothing wrong in reporting that. The other thing is uh, the quality of reporting as well. If you are sitting, so the way that we looked at this problem is, if we think from external out in, what would you like to see? 
how would you trust the data to be able to create a product based on mainline kernel, mainline U-boot, mainline TFA, everything mainline. Call it Yocto Master directly. You need to be able to reproduce the data. You need to be able to trust the, trust the test reports that are coming out. But there's no standardization. You're entirely dependent on TI's translation of the test report. If we say that I2C is functional, you can't replicate that. You have to trust us. Long story short, kernel CI today is solving a humongous problem already. The infrastructure for that, a distributed reporting system, the amount of platforms that they're trying to solve is already a complex problem. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The real thing that we as embedded developers have is the platforms themselves, the products themselves. Here's a scope for us to grow further down. Barry. So, call for action. Common testing framework beyond Linux kernel, as Nishan said, leverage the shared solutions. You know, kernel CI can be that umbrella. You know, it's, it's part way there. You know, it would be a good place to, to congregate to do that. So, you know, our, our, you know, our challenge is how do we work together to make that a reality? You know, and that's, you know, that's kind of what we're asking with this call to action. Okay, quick thank yous. Obviously, Texas Instruments, Linux Foundation, Kernel CI, uh, Lenaro, uh, Pangatronics, Calabra, none of this would be possible without their help. So, big, big thank you. And contact information, uh, myself, Nishant, Minas, uh, emails and uh, IRCs, et cetera. And we will open it up for questions. We really wanted this to be like a conversation where um, what stops us from doing this? Um, Brian. Okay, <clears throat> so I can tell you what's stopping me from using kernel CI right now, and that's that I'm waiting for V2 to drop. Uh, it's in its next generation phase, and I'm a little bit worried that they're in a, a mode, well, I talked to you about this in the hallway. I'm a little bit worried that they're in a mode where the next version of it is going to be like a kitchen sink version. They kind of have second system syndrome. Uh, anyone want to comment on that? Am I wrong? I could be wrong. I think we gave that impression, and I think we were right in the direction. We've been fixing the strategy for the past three months there. And uh, we have a system that's working. It's supporting build results, supporting boot results. Uh, there is much better testing for device probe, for example, enabled. And uh, we are scaling up that like slowly, like uh, involving a few maintainers, uh, reporting a lot of this data stuff like manually at the moment because we want, to, we want like a data that we, that we can trust. And we want like to not make the mistakes of the past system that was just, if you, if you start like looking to how the test results, it's a big mess in, 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 the, in the legacy system because we, we can't really understand like, uh, uh, the, the, the bulkiness of the data there. So we are spending a lot of time on, on, on that process and uh, more communication is coming up. Like, uh, we had like, some blog posts uh, last week. Uh, there is a bunch of other things on the way. There is a community engagement working group that has been set up and Shua Khan is going to join us to lead that group. So that's kind of uh, the new states of things. I think that, uh, that kitchen sink is no more now. You say something. FUSA, request traceability, right? And there is a tool called Balif that has been starting to get built. And this will probably play a big role in us putting that entire story some together, along with traceability though. That's not the point which I want to make. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was more on the, uh, the side where you, you had an, one slide where you were showing all the different kind of, like Lagrid, or if you go uh, with whatever you like. It sounds a little bit like you would like to look for how can we get more standardization, but the question is, would it make more sense to go on like this is the agreed 
standard we are talking, not about the tool which we're using. I'm asking this because I come from an environment where I have LTP test cases, I have robot test cases, I have CTS, VTS, STS test case from Android. LTP, I have all these different kind of things. I don't want to spend any effort in migrating one test framework to the other. But the nice thing about the test framework is they come up with saying, I report a test case, it goes with a zero, a one, a minus one, whatever they have as a result, and we directly translate and create like a mapping on it. And with this we can see, independent of which testing environment we're using, we get a comparable list of results for the reports because at the end you want to see a green, red, cross, check, whatever, and maybe find something like configuration and often to try to get a standard. So um, I see the Genevi, for example. Genevi started with a generic IVI system. There was so much discussion going on, they couldn't agree on which audio manager to use, which framework, here or there, uh, other parts. There was no strong alignment with AGL. What turned out is that the Genevi changed into a Covisa, where they do a lot of vehicle signal specification. And this vehicle signal specification gives the room to say, we are discussing, we are talking a similar language, we have an interface, open standard, and uh, I would see this is much more a way to go, and they get traction, and it helps that OEMs suddenly work together and say, well, I need these kind of signals, you need that, and we make this as the interface, and this could be an interface also towards kernel CI or whatever. Three different problems that you, you introduced, but let's talk through them. In terms of information exchange, there has to be a standard, right? and that's the best way to do it. Have the abstraction at API or data exchange level, and we need to do that, step number one. Step number two is the, the f even if we standardize something, there will always be someone who is not lining up the standard. There will be someone. BTI, be it with any, anybody in that case. So there's a cost to move to the standard. Why should I do that? Like, be it the same source code, be it a different source code, or be it the same source code. The translation has a cost. We'll have to justify that to our management. Everybody will have to. That the standard actually has value by moving to this API standard. The third vector, standardizing the test code itself. There are benefits in some areas where they are commodity, but as you mentioned, it can be a very hotly debated topic. And we you know the VI versus Emacs discussion, but we won't bring that in, right? Again, we have not set up the working group yet, and this is part of the discussion in terms of we would like to do that. And we would like members to come and say, where do we want to draw the line? We don't want to come and say, okay, we are willing to provide the code that we have, right? We'll dump it out there and say, this is what we do. Do you guys want to use it? Do you want to write, rewrite it? Or do we reduce the scope to just purely API? From where I stand, I feel there's a lot of value in sharing code directly and contributing to that. Because from TI's perspective, there are vendors like Fitech over here who work across multiple SOC vendors, right? There's companies like Toradex who do the same. They all invent the same thing. And there's a lot of value, at least at embedded level, that we can share. And it's not differentiating at all. Now, there's a cost associated, which means I will have to rewrite a lot of stuff on my end. From my perspective, it pays off in 10 years. It's worth it. Now, are you convinced? That's a different question. OK, as you know, I've been, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir, or maybe singing to the preacher here. Um, so about six years ago, I had Fuego adopt the kernel CI format as its, out, as its native output format, or at least translated into JSON. Um, and then kernel CI changed. Uh, so that was a bummer, because it was a lot of work. And so uh, if we adopt something, uh, it would be good if we uh, kept it. Uh, the only way I think you can deal with this is you're not going to go back to things like LTP, these massive suites that already exist, and have them change their output format. That's true. And, and so I think you have, to have, you have to have a parser per test, or at least a parser for per test output category. So that's one of the reasons we pushed KTAP 
uh, into the kernel. KTOP is not the greatest output format, but it's good enough, uh, particularly for the types of tests that the kernel was running at the time we adopted it. And uh, it's uniform, right? So, and I really appreciate the efforts, by the way, to go into the existing kernel tests and make them compliant with that output format. Because now you can at least run KTAP on, you can run a tap parser on the kernel and put it into whatever you want the lingua franca to be for, for test output. Uh, you can do the same thing with LTP. With, you, know, you make a single parser for LTP, you get a huge amount of win off of all that. Uh, but I would love to see a single common format. Maybe kernel CI as it is today is now that current format. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't looked recently because it scares me to have to go back and rewrite my, my generator again. The generator was one of the hardest things to write to try to, try to do, do that in Fuego was to write a generator that could handle all the different cases. And I have all these parsing modules, but I would love to have them land somewhere that other people could reuse them. Right, so IO zone results I can put out into old kernel CI. I can take Bonnie results. I can take stress test results, and we just need to p find a place to put that stuff. But right, all my parsers are Fuego parsers. All right, they're in Python. They just take output and convert it into a Python module. But we need to f have the discussion. We just need to pick one and actually start doing it. But the harder part is not the coding. It's it's finding someone who's going to host that and. You know, you have to have a place where this code can live. This has been a big topic on the current site community in the past like a few weeks, and yesterday we spent like a few hours on this topic. Like not only the test specifications per se, but the whole architecture of what current CI uh, will be from now on. And um, we feel that uh, like all the, all the different CIs, they have like their own test specifications, their own, like uh, they store in their data that, and we want to move that out of uh, the different CI systems and maybe move m a lot of that inside the kernel tree. Like that's part of the effort that we're pushing like with uh, GitLab CI, uh, improving the test quality, test quality of things, like and there is a test catalog uh, proposal from, from Nikolai Kondershov as well. That uh, all those things I think are taking us towards like a more common place to start like a not, not only the tests, the, the specification for the tests, the kernel configs, like uh, which boards should be, be running, which things. So I think that's, that's where kernel CI is, is building a lot, of, uh, a lot of grounds for people to come and share that. I guess um, with all the parthing and adjusting to something which is a project, the question if this is really the way where you want to put your bad on. If I think, for example, on container framework, there's a large set of container frameworks available, different kind of containers, but there's also the OCI compliant container, the Open Container Initiative, and what I hear in the industries I'm talking to that they say, okay, we may have, like there is the LXC which is not compatible, where they have certain use cases where they accept it. And because I say that's for a performance reason or so, we need to go with it. But I know a lot of other places where they say, we will only accept new technology which is in accordance to an open standard interface. And then it may be better to have like an open testing, infrastructure testing interface, whatever, which could be hooked under uh, existing an environment like kernel CI or so, but having more open. And of course, you will also find then even in OCI compliance decks, extensions. So uh, where you just say, okay, the OCI is not fulfilling all my needs. I need extra features, I need extra things, but they are not for all cases, which allows you also differentiating parts. Maybe for testing, it's less on the differentiating elements but you can have all like extra fields. You see this also with SPDX where you have like mandatory things, extension things, you're more compatible, less compatible. And I guess this is for me the perspective where you leave a lot of openness and you bring it to the standard R framework and then you have maybe parse those adapters and say here this is how I can have the Fuego to the intermediate parsing being compatible with kernel CI and so on. So to just have this as an interface and not changing all the things again and again because 
one project decide that we change it to a different format because we like it better and don't see the full ecosystem of all our users. I mean, that's that the thing which you have in a traditional way also when you do open source or fork open source projects, you utilize them, but you don't give back your requirements, you don't give back your modifications. There is a strong risk of breaking with the upstream. And this would be something similar like we have all these different kind of test types, all these different kind of things. They all need to be then aware to the kernel CI environment, and kernel CI need to know how they are used in order not by mistake breaking something and getting then all the feedback of the community. And maybe this works more if we say, here we have a standard. You comply to it, you change it, and then we have like a governing board and a standard, which is not like a collecting pool of that's where we have the result or text ex test execution. <laughs> it's going to be a journey. The first thing is to say that, you know, we can, I, if there's one message we were to take from this presentation, right, we can go and attack the easy problems, right, of saying that a kernel CI is, let, let's solve this problem of reporting and reporting of boot systems for the maintainers. Yes, we kernel maintainers appreciate that quite a bit. Thank you. But the scope is much broader. Right? The real problem set that we have to solve is much broader. It will take us a few years to get there. We'll make mistakes in the route. But this is where the collaboration comes into play. What are the right tools for us to use? What are the, what are the steps that we should really take? And do we constrain it to purely kernel? Or do we want to extend this further beyond kernel into other open ecosystems? Zephyr can, be, can also benefit out of the same thing. I know the folks who like Twister and you know PyTest, U-Boot uses PyTest, Zephyr uses Twister, we use our own kernel self-test, KTAP, whatever that standard is, right? Let's talk the same language as step number one, right? The intent is to start, start that migration, start that discussion. Let's look beyond what we are doing today. And if you folks are interested in joining the, us in the journey, we would love to talk. Love to hear your ideas. We don't have a monopoly on ideas. We need your ideas too. Any other questions? questions? Comments? Thoughts? So Gustavo and um, the Kernel CI team is here. You have our contacts as well. We are on IRC2. So you guys can just, if you are wondering how do you propose this to your management and you need help, come talk to us. We can work informally. We'll try and figure this out. Thank you. Thank you.